Berger's disease, also known as thromboangitis obliterans, is an inflammatory disease of medium blood vessels. In this image, I'll give you a quick visual mnemonic to sort out this vasculitis come testing. For this scene, we're heading on over to the public pool to dip our toes into the water. And this pool has my favorite burger stand. That's right, I'm talking about obliterate burger. The word burger should help you remember Berger's, and the word obliterate should help you remember its other name, thromboangitis obliterans. And remember back when I said this was a disease of medium-sized blood vessels? That's what the pool in the back is for. It's a medium-sized body of water, which should help you remember that Berger's disease is a medium vessel vasculitis. Specifically, Berger's disease tends to affect the vessels of the hands and feet. We'll touch on the details throughout the scene. <coughs> oh man, did I mention Obliterate Burger's signature move? That's right, Obliterate Burger really obliterates your burger. Black into a crisp. And to get that nice char, the grill really has to get a smoking. See that big plume of smoke coming off the grill? This should help you remember that Berger's disease is strongly associated with smoking. The exact cause is unknown, but it is thought that smoking triggers an immune response that leads to the pathologic vessel inflammation. While we're here, I also want to mention that patients diagnosed with Berger's disease should stop smoking. It won't cure the disease once you have it, but smoking cessation can slow progression and reduce the severity of the disease. Now turn your attention to the back of the stand. See the guy thawing the burgers under the water? He's wearing blue latex gloves to handle the ice-cold burgers, which should help you remember the finding of Raynaud phenomenon. Raynaud phenomenon refers to the fingers changing colors when exposed to the cold. Recall from physiology that cold temperatures lead to the constriction of blood vessels. I mean, the body has to conserve heat, right? And also recall that vasculitides are commonly associated with ischemia, or a lack of blood flow. Vasculitis leads to inflammation, thrombosis, and scarring, each of which contributes to ischemia. When patients with Berger's disease expose their fingers to cold water, the vessels clamp down and further ischemia occurs. This ischemia can lead to cyanosis, which is a blue discoloration of skin caused by hypoxia. That's why you get the blue color changes you see in Raynaud phenomenon. It's because of a lack of blood flow. Next, look at that healthy pile of meat right there. Yeah, I'm talking about that fat stack of burgers, not our hunk thawing them. Notice how the burgers are pretty red with blood, and how they've been segmented in the packaging, so it's easy to separate them to put on the grill. This is here to help us remember the pathological appearance of segmental thrombosing inflammation on biopsy. Segmental inflammation describes inflammation happening in portions or segments of the vessel, sparing other parts of the same vessel. Thrombosing inflammation refers to coagulation in the formation of blood clots. Recall how vessel damage in vasculitis can expose subendothelial collagen and tissue factor. These factors promote the formation of blood clots, also called thrombi, which then block the flow of blood. This can actually result in a complete blockage of flow, formerly known as obliteration of the vessel. This is actually why obliterans is in the name of the disease, thromboangitis obliterans. As a side note, this segmental thrombosing inflammation can also involve the veins and the nerves. Just remember our burgers here, and you'll remember the buzzwords, segmental thrombosing vasculitis. Okay, let's turn back to the grill. Our guy at the grill is working hard flipping the burgers, but it looks like he's in danger of getting burned by the flames. Ouch! They have to use the hottest flames here to obliterate the burgers, after all. You could even say that this guy experiences pain as he exerts himself at the grill. This should help you remember another finding in Berger's disease, intermittent claudication. When you exercise or otherwise move a muscle, the muscle requires additional blood flow to keep up with demand. In patients with Berger's disease, the shoddy vessels can't always keep up, so intermittent claudication occurs. Intermittent claudication is just pain with exercise, and it's caused by insufficient blood flow, also known as ischemia. As our guy puts his arms to use, he's in for a world of pain. No pain, no gain, right? So I told you about Raynaud phenomenon and intermittent claudication, but what happens when the disease gets really bad? Notice how our grill master's other hand has gotten burned by the flames already. 
The singed tips of his rubber glove kind of look like gangrenous necrosis, which should help you remember the finding of gangrene in Berger's disease. To strengthen the word association, we've even made his gloves green to help you remember the word gangrene. As the disease progresses, ischemia can occur even when not exposed to cold water nor when exercising. And since the blood vessels themselves are affected, there's really no way to restore blood flow. Prolonged ischemia causes gangrene, which refers to tissue death by ischemia. This usually affects the digits first, like the fingers and the toes. Alright, so a big gangrenous finger isn't going to stay there forever. When a digit has completely died, it can actually fall off in what is termed auto-amputation of the digits. This is a high yield fact, so I want you to develop a knee-jerk association between auto-amputation of digits and Berger's disease. To help you remember the subsequent auto-amputation of digits, turn your attention to the burger on the counter. Uh, somebody better call the health inspector. It looks like there's a finger in my burger. Not only did they obliterate my burger, they also obliterated some poor guy's finger. Man, I really hope Obliterate Burger doesn't get shut down. It's my favorite burger spot, after all. Anyways, just remember the severed finger ruining my delicious Obliterate Burger and you'll be set. So, I already mentioned that I love Obliterate Burger, but I've never been able to get a job there. Since they work near the pool, they only hire the hottest guys. <sighs> I mean, just look at those muscles. Those arms are about as veiny as they come. These veiny arms should remind you of the finding of superficial thrombophlebitis. Remember how I mentioned earlier that segmental thrombosing inflammation in Berger's disease also affects the veins? That's right. Both arteries and veins are affected in Berger's disease. Let's break down the word thrombophlebitis real quick. Thrombo means blood clot and phlebitis means inflammation of the veins. Putting this together, superficial thrombophlebitis refers to the finding of inflamed and clotted superficial veins. Makes sense, right? Additionally, these hot young men should also help you remember the typical patient population, young males between 20 and 40 years old because Obliterate Burger only hires the hottest young things. And that's it for Berger's disease. Let's recap. Berger's disease, also known as thromboangitis obliterans, is a medium vessel vasculitis that is strongly associated with smoking. It is classically seen in males younger than 40 years old. Clinically, Berger's disease presents with intermittent claudication, which refers to pain caused by lack of blood flow, especially during exercise. When this affects the fingers, patients can develop Raynaud phenomena, which refers to the fingers change in colors from white to blue and finally red when exposed to the cold. When the finger ischemia is even more severe, gangrene and auto-amputation of digits can occur. Patients with Berger's disease may also develop superficial thrombophlebitis, which refers to inflammation and clotting along the veins. Pathology reveals a segmental thrombosing vasculitis with vein and nerve involvement. Smoking cessation is not curative, but it's been shown to slow progression and reduce severity of Berger's disease. Whew, we're done. Now go enjoy a delicious obliterated burger. With all that char, this probably should have been a gastric cancer scene. But hey, hindsight is 2020, right? This is Nathan, signing off. You stay classy, you pixarized watcher you. Thanks for watching. For more videos like these, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also check out the interactive version of this image at pixarized.com by following the link in the description. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.